creatively, things can be so frustrating at times when you have a vision and uh, the ones in charge don't share that vision with you. It's something I've struggled with for a while now. Um, there's just a lot that I take pride in in the way I present myself and my stuff online and uh, my stories, whether it be in the ring or just a, a, a rivalry that we're doing at the time. And a lot of the time, I'm not given anything to work with. A lot of the time, uh, you're just given a match and, and within that context, you sort of just do what you got to do. But I really pride myself on my storytelling and I think it's from listening to Kenny and watching what he's doing right now and I love that I can do those sort of things myself on this platform now I, I never had the opportunity before you know when you don't get the the five minute promos and the video packages and the uh, and the chance to really elaborate more on what's going on uh, it, it really hurts the ability to emotionally connect with stories that we're doing, especially in that environment at the bar shows. So this is this is my chance to just kind of get it all out there. Um, it's very defeating when you don't have anything, when you're not featured, when you feel you should be. But I'm not mad. I'm just driven to work harder to connect those dots now. And um, obviously communication is key, so I'm you know going to talk to the right people and hopefully get the message across of why I was frustrated with that and um I'll just put it out there right now uh the plan if everything goes right is I'm wrestling Kevin O'Doyle and here's a guy that I've been in a rivalry with since June and I, I feel like that's something that should be promoted because there there's a story there that a lot of you have been watching uh almost from the beginning uh, I, w I would like to break it down more for you. Uh, I'll probably do it in video form after this little intro. So I appreciate you guys for tuning in this time. This means a lot, and I think this is something that doesn't get talked about enough and shown. I think it's going to be interesting to actually see kind of how this progresses, is that the creative frustration of pro wrestling behind the scenes. You know, sometimes you see things and you think they should play out a certain way, but it doesn't always happen because of certain different dynamics that kind of come into play with everything. So uh, enjoy this. I'm going to dive into the history of myself and Kevin O'Doyle and the story that I've told. This wasn't supposed to, this wasn't a planned storyline. This was just me having a match with him and I had to put him over. And then after that match, I decided I wanted to continue working with him. And it's just evolved into this huge rivalry now that's lasted, like I said, since June of last year. So I think it's super important. It's something I've worked very hard on myself without a lot of interview time, without a lot of uh, pushing for it. So uh, sit back, enjoy, and for all you Winnipeg fans or anybody actually making the travel out to catch the PCW show, I'll see you there. Thanks again for watching. Storytelling is just a natural part of wrestling. It's the stories that allow us to become emotionally invested in people and moments. This story was created from nothing. It's another chapter in the story of Jay Walker. I was a young kid who did whatever it took to become a champion. Any means necessary. I became so obsessed with being champion that I snapped. But after three title reigns of a combined 779 days as champion, my character needed a new challenge. He wanted to prove that he was as good as he said he was by going straight, by not relying on cheap tactics. He's been able to have big matches. He won the golden ticket, guaranteeing him a title shot whenever against whoever. But there's been a thorn in my side since. The muscle to the group which at one time held all the titles. Kevin O'Doyle. Now I'm forced to go against a guy twice my size, using all the cheap tactics I once relied on against insurmountable odds with the gentleman's club in his corner. And I'm not giving up. Because getting to that next level means so much. Proving not only to the people, but to myself that I'm the very best there is out there. Using my old tactics, I've lost any and all allies or friends that once trusted me. So I have to do this alone. 
But time and time again, just when it looks like I'm able to overcome all the odds, Alex Vanna stops me in my tracks. Alex and I were once tag team partners. We're on similar trajectories in our career. I see him as a little brother, following in my footsteps. I see him making all the same mistakes that I made. He's becoming obsessed over the very same title I'd held. He's snapped and taken it to another level. And I want to be there for him and steer him on the right path. But he's not ready to listen to me. So instead, I have to show him. And this Friday is the perfect chance to do that. One more time. Jay Walker, Kevin O'Doyle. And now that Alex Van is a little preoccupied with Dalton Castle, I've got him all to myself. And I feel when I finally beat O'Doyle, I can cash in that ticket. I can show Vanna and the world and myself that I'm ready to be the guy. The one that carries PCW into the next generation. The flag bearer. The man. This match on Friday means everything to me. Being able to get this win, to beat O'Doyle, to overcome one of my biggest opponents in my career, to end this chapter of my story, to start anew, it won't be easy. But it's now or never. This story, it's my story. And it's the climax. And if I want people to believe in me moving forward, I need this. Like I've said before, one life, one run. I was never meant to make it this far. I am the glitch in the system. So I want to see just how far I can really go.